Hello, welcome to our lesson on linear versus nonlinear data. I'm excited that you're joining us today. The, as you're working with these problems, you if you can graph and it's a line, then you know it's going to be a linear data. So finding a way to graph some of these problems can really help you out. So just so you know, on your EOI, you will get regular graph paper that looks like this. Um, so it doesn't have any X or Y axis lined out for you or anything like that. It's just plain. So you do have to know how to draw an X and Y axis and graph from there. But once you have that skill done and learned, you one of the things that I like to do is print out pre-made ones just because it helps the problems go a little bit faster. And so here I have one big one on the sheet and it has it numbered um, negative 10 through 10 on both axes. Um, but then I also have a blank one in case I need something bigger than that. And then if I'm doing multiple problems at once, I also um, print it out. You can also print out ones that are have multiple on each. So here's multiple co plane coordinate systems and here's multiple ones that are have the 10. Now once I have these printed I print them on a little bit thicker paper and I slide them into a page protector and the reason that I do that is because now I can get a dry erase marker and do a problem and then have a napkin and erase it and use this one over and over again so I'm not always using a ton of paper and a ton of printer ink to print a bunch of graphs. I mean, you can also go out and get this on sale at a local Walmart, or you can use your learning funds. Um, so that's just one of the tricks I have to help answer these questions, and that way you have some graph paper. And that's one of the tools, the plain graph paper, that you have on your EOI to help you. So getting used to how to use it is a great idea. Um, and also another trick with these questions is it's, a set of data can either be linear or nonlinear. It can't be both. It can't be neither. It has to be one or the other. So that helps you eliminate some questions and answers also. And just remember our study tips. Um, you can pause, rewind, fast forward this video as much as you need to. You can pause at the beginning of a problem, see what answer you get, and then double check it with me so you can see how well you are learning or if you need more practice. And I also highly recommend that you take notes in your notebook as you are going through this video. So I'm glad that you're here and let's try out a few problems. Here are some different ways that data could be represented that you could be asked to identify if it's linear or nonlinear from. And so the answers here are also included in case you want to pause and look at these. But you could be asked to identify linear and nonlinear relations from a set of tables, from a set of points, graphs, or equations. And in the following examples, I will explain more on how to do that. But I just wanted to show you that you might have a variety of ways that data is represented for these questions. So this first example, we are looking at an equation, y equals 6x plus 6. And it wants to know if it's linear, nonlinear, both linear, or neither. And just to let you know, it's always going to be linear or nonlinear, like I said in the introductory video. So I can go ahead and get rid of b and c right off the bat. When you're looking at an example that is has this equation, you are, for it to be linear, it can't have any of the following. So linear data can't have more than two variables when talking about an equation. So that means you can't have y equals 3 x plus z. That has three variables in it, x, y, and z. It can't, linear data, no term can have more than one variable. So that means 
you can't have something like this, y equals 6xy. Okay, this term here, x, 6xy has two variables in it, so that's no good. You can't have an exponent greater than 1, so y equals 3x squared plus 6. That's not linear because of this exponent of 2. And then last but not least, you can't have an exponent with a variable in the denominator. So y equals 6 over x plus 1. That doesn't work because of this x here is in the denominator. So when I look at this example I'm given here, it has two variables. Each term only has one. There's no exponent greater than two, and there's no variables in the denominator. So your answer here is it's going to be linear. In this next example, we're trying to decide if this equation is linear or nonlinear. So once again, you can automatically get rid of these two choices. And here, it has an exponent of 3. Because of that exponent greater than 1, because of that exponent of 3, it can't be linear. So my answer here is going to be D, nonlinear. And now I'm looking at some examples that have the graphs. So it can be kind of hard to see, but there's some points on all of these graphs. And if it's, it wants to know which of these are nonlinear. Well, if I can't connect these points in a straight line, then it's nonlinear. So if I look at W, those connect in a straight line. So W is linear. X, those connect in a straight line. So X is linear. Y, those points connect in a straight line. So Y is linear. Z, they don't connect in a straight line. So Z is my nonlinear, so letter D. In this next example, it's a graph once again. And this time it's not a set of points, it's in a line that's drawn. Is that line straight or is it curved? It's curved. So my answer is going to be nonlinear. If it was straight, that would be linear. But it's curved, so my answer is nonlinear. In this next example, I'm looking at a table. And so the table, there's two ways you can do it. One of which is you can graph it. And if these five points all graph in a straight line, then it's going to be linear. So let's go ahead and look at that way first. So I have a piece here of blank graph paper, or like I said in the intro, you can print things out and make the table that we, and make the, yeah, make the different tables that we talked about in the page protector. And so here, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, and I'm going to do these by one. So my first point here is going to be 111. So I'm going to go over one and then up 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to put a point right there. I'm going to do the next for my next one. So I'm going to go over 2 and up 14. So I know this is 11, 12, 13, 14. Then my next point is 317, so I'm going to go over 3 and then up 17, so 15, 16, 17. And then I have my next point, which is 420, so I'm going to go over 4 and up 20, so that's going to be right here. Then my last point is 523, the last one on the table, and that's going to be right here. And I've plotted my points. And now those points are connected, can be connected in a straight line. So this one's going to be C linear. 
Now, number, if you're going to do this, you need to do it on graph paper because if you're just freehanding it on blank paper, it's going to be really hard to tell if it makes a straight line or not. You need to do it on graph paper. So if at that moment you don't have graph paper, the other way that we can do number five is a pattern. So if the X column and the Y column follow the same pattern, then it's also linear. So if we look, the X column is increasing by ones. So the pattern on my X side is plus one. Now to go on my Y side, 11 to 14 is plus three. 14 to 17 is plus three. 17 to 20 is plus three. And 20 to 23 is plus three. So I also have a pattern on the Y column. They don't have to be the same pattern, but they each have to have their own pattern. So since X has a pattern and Y's have a pattern, that's going to be linear. If any of that didn't hold true even once, then it would be nonlinear. So in my next problem here, I have another table. So I'm going to show you both ways once again. So if you're going to go ahead and graph, then you're going to want to draw an X and Y axis. And I see that all of my numbers are positive in this table. So that's why the majority of my um, graph shows the first quadrant where, the po where X and Y is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and plot 1, 4, which is going to be right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and plot 2, 8 which is going to be right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and plot 312, which is right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and plot 416, which is right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and plot the last one, which is 518, which is right here. And I was going real strong for a straight line until this last one it veers off just a tiny bit so it's going to be nonlinear. and if i go ahead and double check that to look for patterns i should find a case where the pattern doesn't hold out so in my x column i'm going up by ones plus one plus one plus one plus one so i still have a pattern on the x side okay to go from four to eight that's plus four 8 to 12 is plus 4, 12 to 16 is plus 4, and then 16 to 18 is plus 2. So in this last part right here, my plus 4 pattern didn't fall, carry through, so that's why it's going to be nonlinear. So that's why it's always important to check it to the very end, because it wasn't until the very end that I found, uh, found the spot that told me it was nonlinear. So I'm glad that you joined us today. And I hope you have a good one.